Hi everyone, Antonia here. I am going to answer your questions about the tribe and experiences around that. So thank you very much um, for having me here and I hope you find this interesting and informative. The tribe threw you into the role of a struggling young mother who had to face a lot of issues over the course of her personal development as the show progressed. Casting your mind back, what was it like to play such a difficult role at such a young age and how did you mentally prepare yourself for the role? Yeah, it was a challenge playing Trudy. I think the the biggest challenge of the whole thing was actually arriving as a 14 year old. I was 14 in real life and Trudy was also 14 and giving birth straight away, arriving nine months pregnant and the birth scene was actually pretty much my first scene of the whole series of the tribe. So that was pretty hard and interestingly on that note my parents almost didn't let me to take the role because they felt it was inappropriate for me to be playing a role as a teenage mother I think they thought it might sort of seep into my soul <laughs> somehow um, but once they'd given their blessing uh, we moved forward from there so that I feel was the, the element that took the most preparation and it just went into a lot of research really about there wasn't YouTube back in 1998, so it was just taught a lot of chats with my mum about her birthing experiences, which was kind of weird but useful. And then the makeup artist, she was really, really great and really helped me on the day just kind of go with it. So that was, yeah, pretty tough. And then after that, as yeah things kind of went from bad to worse with Trudy, in terms of preparation, I just kind of tried to bring as much truth to it as possible and tried to relate to her experiences with mine as much as possible and often they weren't very similar but I, I had never experienced being a cult leader and having my my baby worshipped as a god so sometimes that there were more challenges than others but it was a really supportive environment uh, the directors were great and the all of the cast were wonderful and a lot of the other actors were having to portray similarly really challenging things. So we, we were all there for each other and you know tried to make the process as enjoyable as possible even if it was challenging. Cool. Um, a lot of the cast that uh, we've interviewed have mentioned being blown away by the fan reaction to the show overseas. Since it initially was never as big back in New Zealand here, do you remember there being a moment where you realized just how massive an international hit the tribe was? Um, yeah, sort of. I, I When we got to about season three or four, that was when we started to get a sense of how it was being received overseas and in Europe mainly, um, because we started getting quite a lot of fan mail and and photos of people dressing up and the costumes and putting on the makeup and, and writing to us and saying how much the tribe had changed their lives, which was... You know, pretty extraordinary but I think it only really hit home when I experienced it for myself when I went on the tribe tour to Europe when I was 18 and that was extraordinary because we were just dumped right right in the middle of it and yeah we were in our tour bus and people would be running after us down the road completely decked out in tribe gear or would, would turn up to signings and there would just be you know, over a thousand people there, all dressed up like their favorite character and all having this incredibly personal, real, deep response to the show. And it, yeah, it was extraordinary and really heartwarming to see how much it resonated with people and really seemed to be quite a fundamental and important aspect of so many people's lives. Because yeah, in New Zealand, it, it, it was never quite embraced like that. And we were just in our own little bubble filming it in Wellington. So it was, yeah, it was quite a shock, but a, but a very cool shock. Um, how did you feel about Trudy being viewed as such an iconic and a, an inspiring character? Very uh, flattered, I, I, I think, and, and honoured. When we were filming, I just sort of felt quite sorry for Trudy quite a lot of the time because so many bad things kept happening to her and she was in very challenging positions. But to be honest, I never... Um, I didn't, I was always thinking about it subjectively. I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it objectively or how other people 
would relate to it. I was, I guess I was just thinking how I would relate to it. But yeah, finding out retrospectively that the challenges that she was going through and the way she was able to navigate those did have a real resonance with fans and that they got a lot out of it, I thought was really heartwarming actually. And I just think for me that justifies the whole process. You know, if you're able to help someone, one person with your art, with your vocation, then that's it's job done. It completely justifies the whole experience, regardless of how perhaps challenging it was at times. So the fact that, yeah, so many people seem to have um, really found solace and, and hope and um, inspiration in what Trudy was going through and continue to to this day. I'm still amazed at the some of the letters I get from people. It's, um, yeah, it's a real, really, real honour. Cool. Um, a large segment of the fandom were amazed by the developing friendship and bond that slowly built up between both Trudy and Amber. Um, from their rivals to friends to mothers fighting to build a better world for their children, certainly one of the most genuine and heartwarming interactions to come from the series. However, there are lots of opinions about the special bond once Jay came onto the scene. Do you remember having any personal feelings about the writers going down a typical route of having a man, yet again, come between them? And worse still for Trudy to lose out once more in love. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I I think, yeah, at the time I was a little bit... I felt, again, bad for Trudy that she was once again unlucky in love and once again did, did lose out uh, for what she wanted. But I think at the same time, I also knew that... Jay and Amber were way better suited for each other. It was it was very clear, even though I'm sure Trudy didn't want to think that. I'm sure she did realize on on a level. So yeah, I was I I wasn't um, annoyed or frustrated or anything like that. I I think the story did unfold uh, in the in the appropriate way. Um, there were some of the lessons. What what were some of the lessons you learned, like professionally or personally, from working on the tribe? Is there anything from your time on the show that you still remember and use in either your work or daily life? Yeah, there's lots actually. We were so lucky to be on the tribe because it went for five seasons and and really our you know formative teenage years and it taught us so much about on set etiquette and about the the technical and creative elements of making a TV series because we were pretty much blank slates. I'd done I'd done one series and then an episode of another series before that, but nothing that went on for years and years. And, you know, we were teenagers and some of us, not me of course, uh, were kind of naughty and we, and high level of discipline was expected from us on set. So we were we were never late. Uh, we'd always hit our marks, we'd always find our light, we'd always know our lines and we we wouldn't muck around. And and that was just what was expected. And I remember <laughs> when I finished the tribe and went on to a more, um, a, a, an adult drama and all the actors were way more, like they were way bit more badly behaved. Like they were chatting when they weren't supposed to be and they weren't listening to the crew and they wouldn't hit their marks. And I was sort of shocked because this stuff was just embedded in us. You, you have to do this. You must do this. So yeah, I feel like I got excellent onset training that I still, um, use every single day in my career. What's your fondest memory from working on the show? My fondest memory, well, it's, I don't know if I can isolate one in particular, but it's because I have so many and it's, it's about the people that I, that I met on the show who really became my best friends and, and they still are. I, I went away to, um, on holiday for a weekend away two weeks ago with, um, Beth and Tori, <laughs> you know, who played Amber and Celine, uh, they're, they're, yeah, two of my, my my best friends. So I just have so many fond memories of just having a great time with them. I mean, it was it was a challenging job, and we worked hard, but also we were we knew we were pretty lucky, and we were just yeah a, a group of teenagers being friends. And I, I remember so many times Mikey Wesley Smith, who played Jack, being hilarious and just laughing so hard that tears were rolling down our cheeks. And then we'd all get together on the weekends and. Yeah, I mean, teenage years are so formative and the fact that we were all around each other for in such an intensive way for five years meant that we built pretty unshakable bonds and 
and that out of out of everything is what I'm most grateful to the tribe for. Uh, it really comes to, as no surprise for any fan of the show who witnessed your um, range performance as Trudy to see that you forged a career within the industry. Um, there are so many projects that you've been involved that we'd love to talk about. Um, what was it like filming Anzac Girls? Some of the scenes uh, were very violent and you were also dealing with a very serious topic. So were there any aspects of the drama that um, were particularly difficult for you? I think the element of Anzac Girls that was particularly challenging, I guess might be the a more appropriate word, is that I was playing a real person. And it's the first time I've done that um, in any long form sh style show. And not only was I playing just any real person, I was playing an extraordinary real person. Hilda Steele in World War I did, did extraordinary things. So I felt, uh, yeah, quite, a, quite a, a weight of responsibility to do her justice for Hilda herself, but also for her family that is still around today. So it felt like um, an, an honor and a responsibility in, in equal parts, but that was always the, the element of um, of challenge, I suppose, that I felt in me, just the, the desire to really, to do my best, not only for me, but for her. Whereas in all my previous jobs, I, I wanna do well for me, or I wanna do well for the show, but this time I felt like I, I wanted to, to do a good job for an even greater and more important reason. Cool. You're currently involved in several ongoing TV series like West Side, uh, and your new show in Australia, Sisters. What is it about the medium that you enjoy the most? Like, do you love the aspect of being able to tackle various personas and storylines? Yeah, I, I. What I love about TV is that you you follow you take a character on a, a journey. I mean, I think the difference between film and TV, or one of the differences, is that in a film you generally focus on one. Uh, time of crisis generally in a character's life and you really tunnel down drill down deep into what that means in a very multi-dimensional way which is really wonderful and inter interesting and stimulating but what you don't get often uh, is is time and and traveling and aging a character so that's what I love in TV you really get to grow and develop a character and they change as you change with it and yeah, one of my absolute favorite things about acting is being able to play a lot of different and very varied characters in TV shows of very different genres. I've been you know, lucky enough to do things that are very high comedy, that are really extremely dramatic and everything that falls in between of that. And, and playing really different characters. I mean, a month ago I was filming Sisters, playing a, a buttoned up contained lawyer in the present day, and right now I'm playing a um, button down <laughs> 80s criminal matriarch uh, who wears nothing but leather and lace and they 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 couldn't be more different and I, I love that challenge of yeah having to kind of yeah step into lots of different personas at a moment's notice. Is it easy or difficult do you think uh, switching between two characters? Um, I think it depends actually I remember when I finished Outrageous Fortune and I've been playing Loretta for six years, I realized um, that sort of unconsciously my barometer for what neutral is had changed because Loretta was obviously quite a difficult character and uh, meaning that she um, wasn't particularly nice. <laughs> and I, I went on to do a play called She Steps to Conquer immediately after I finished Outrageous and I was just sort of, you know, acting, doing my thing and then the director said, oh look, sorry, I think we'll just try that again. Um, you are you're playing a nice person. Like she's Kate's a very lovely, warm character. And I was like, yeah, aren't I doing that? Aren't I being lovely and warm? But I wasn't. So it turns out my idea of lovely and warm was a lot kind of more skewed to being horrible, horrible and cold because of the Loretta that I had been playing had yeah skewed all my internal levels. Um, but is it? I, yeah. So I, I think I have to be aware of that that I can kind of be um, unconsciously affected by the characters. That I've played, but if I have, if I have enough time to rehearse and kind of get into a character before we start the first season of it, uh, like when I we started West Side, I found Rita probably the most challenging character ever to in terms of getting into it. Um, it really yeah felt like I had to move quite a lot from me to get to her, but luckily we did have enough time for that 
traveling process and now we we just started season four yesterday uh and it, it, it was fine to kind of slip straight back in even though i'd been playing this very different character just a month ago because um she's so firmly kind of entrenched in me now cool um is there any character that you've played that you would love to return to um yeah that's a really good question i i think I really enjoyed playing Jane from the Blue Rose. This, that was about mm-hmm. six years ago. And I was actually just re-watching the first episode the other day. And I did think, oh, it's a shame that we only got one season. And I, because I think she was pretty great. And there was a lot of further room for development with that. So, and she was a lot of fun. Like she was a, she was a great antidote to Loretta at the time. So, and she's probably the most kind of, um, I don't know, most sort of, moral <laughs> i usually play people who are not quite amoral and i i thought she was had some pretty interesting ideas about the world so yeah i i, I think she would deserve another visitation cool uh you've also starred in several films like white lies the cure david gould and also pork pie um which was produced by former um former tribe cast member tom Hearn, right yeah uh, as feature films are something, uh, are feature films, sorry, something that you'd like to do more of, and what genre do you find yourself most drawn to and why? Yeah, I'd love to do more feature films um, because, uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, it's a slightly different process in terms of the preparation and execution of that job, and that it's generally focusing on one very important moment in that character's life, and you really drill down to depths that you may not otherwise be able to plumb um, except in effect the feature film format so yes I would love to in short and in terms of what I'm drawn to um, I again I, I love variety um, both comedy and drama I'm really interested in pursuing more I think that I'd say comedy more like just traditional character based films as opposed to like action movies or superhero movies or really sci-fi fantasy movies they're just not absolutely to my taste but beyond genre if if a story is good and if the character is really interesting then i'm i'm super keen to be involved cool speaking of tom Hearn, um beth mcdermott who played alan mentioned about the giggling that she and Dwayne shared about their time together on the tribe when they encountered one another on the set of power rangers um, what was your reaction to working on Dino uh, Thunder with James Nappy Robinson and Tom Hearn again? Oh, it was great. Um, James and Tom and I are really good friends and we loved working together on the tribe and the three of us went to, were amongst the group that went um, uh, to one of the, on one of the promotional tours to Europe. Mm-hmm. So they're, yeah, they're great guys and I mean Power Rangers, it's a, it's a great show. It's, you know, pretty hilarious in lots of ways. Um, so yeah, we had a great time and it was really nice getting together to do something very different from the tribe and gosh, they've gone on to do such wonderful things. And yeah, so proud of them. Is there any role on TV or film that you would have loved to, to have played? What it, yeah. Oh yeah, I would have loved to be in Mad Men, which is now finished. I, that's one of my favorite shows of all time and I, I love everything about it. Um, I love the period, I love the look, I love the writing, I love the performances. So, yeah, every time I watched it, I just sort of had this fantasy that I might be in it. But um, that did not happen. That ship, is, <laughs> that ship has sailed. I'd also actually always really wanted to play Juliet and Romeo and Juliet. But I think, unfortunately, I can't do that anymore. I'm too old. Still hope. <laughs> and what's your proudest role or performance that you've done? My proudest role, the role I'm most proud of, would be Rebecca in White Lies, um, be- mainly because it's the most challenging role I've ever, I've ever had. It was just pretty uh, bleak and challenging content, and the the trauma that and conflict that she was going through was pretty intense. So it was hard. I, I again wanted. It was sort of internally hard because I had anxiety because I wanted to do this role justice and I'd never encountered anything like that before I'd never had this kind of challenge and also the material itself just did require a lot of difficult things Um, so yeah it was challenging and in the same so because of that I think I'm, I'm 
proud of it and and a lot of people have seen the film really responded to it and they got a lot out of it for their own lives even if they couldn't relate specifically to the narrative of the film the themes I think that were underlying it people could relate to so I feel really yeah proud of the response um, that it has received and the resonance that people felt with it. As an actor, is there any role that you wouldn't take on, that you simply wouldn't? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, I think so. I I wouldn't take on a role if I felt it was kind of disturbing, I think, or um, was just not, not, not sort of ethically or morally right. Um, if I, I think if I was too just dis, like too disturbed by something and in not a sort of a, a good way I just I just think I probably wouldn't go near it or if I felt like there was something exploitative going on and th- and that was the case that was the reason for it being disturbing then I think I wouldn't do it and now and uh, yeah I'm also I think more aware of um, as I think the world is as we kind of have this sea change um, towards feminist points of views I I'm less interested now in playing characters that are only there to serve uh, another person's storyline so or like just like the crazy woman or the the you know the foil to something else I'm I'm less interested in playing characters that are kind of funneled down to being a, a, a an archetype as opposed to a um, fully conscious and and complex human being and I'm, I'm really lucky that I ha- haven't had to play roles like that I've been very fortunate in the um, roles that I have had to play but yeah the, the more I, I think about it I think I'm I'm just less interested in, in telling those sorts of stories and in kind of perpetuating <laughs> those stories as well there are absolutely cases where you might there might be a role like that to have in kind of an ironic or sardonic way to point out the very fact that this is going on and that it's wrong but I, yeah, I'm, I'd be less inclined to, to play a role that's purely there to um, facilitate a man's storyline um, without any awareness of that fact. Finally, what can your fans look forward to in 2018? 2018, just around the corner. Uh, well, we have just started filming the second season of West Side, so that should be the second season. Oh. Sorry, we've just started filming. I think it's because it's the second day of shooting yeah. today. We've just started shooting season four of West Side, so that will come out um, next year. So you can look forward to that. And I do have a couple of other things uh, in the pipes, but I probably can't really talk about them yet. So it's looking, it's shaping up to be a, a great year. Um, but West Side is the only thing I can officially talk about. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, And thank you very much once again for your questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing and the support for the tribe, it continues to just blow all of us away and we're we're so grateful to you and uh, really happy that you continue to get things out of it. So yeah, lots of love and um, Merry Christmas soon.